Hey guys, what's up? Today I wanted to do a little bit different of a vlog. I'm gonna go through a bunch of my tweets and pull out a couple questions that some people have been asking and then I also want to cover just a couple questions that I kind of get asked on a regular basis and address those for you guys so that um, you can have a little bit of clarity on a couple of things from my end and make it a little bit more personal um, in this vlog. So in saying that, we'll start off well, the first question from the Boston Cannons, they ask, what's your favorite part about playing in the MLO for the Boston Cannons? And uh, that one for me is just, I think, two things. It's one, being able to fly every single weekend and go to a different place and play in a different city, especially playing in Boston, which is a tremendous organization. But getting on a plane, flying there every single weekend and going doing that is awesome. And then... It, on the same note as the fans. I mean, I think that Boston has some of the greatest fans in the MLL and they're always there supporting every single player on that team and the best is afterwards uh, when all the fans are sitting there at the gate ready to sign autographs and they're just, they're begging for everyone to stay and I mean, sometimes players will be staying half an hour after a game just to sign autographs for for the fans, but that just shows their dedication and, and their love for the, the Boston Cannons. Our next question from Ian McKay. So what's your best roommate experience at school? Um, and it's funny that Ian asked that. I was roommates with Ian and Ray um, when I was at the Hill Academy where I went to high school for grade 12 and uh, my PG or my postgraduate year before I went off to Michigan. but. Probably some of our greatest memories were just sitting at uh, in our room at the house watching One Tree Hill and hanging out. I mean, we would have nights where we were up till 3, 4 a.m. just because we didn't want to go to bed. We wanted to sit there, talk to each other, hang out. Uh, we all played on the same team at the Hill, so uh, we had a lot of fun while we were roommates there at the Hill. Another question from Hill Lacrosse is, what's your favorite part about working at the Hill Academy? And, for me, that's just the staff. The staff, the, the faculty are unbelievable there. Every single one of them has either played at the collegiate level or understands the collegiate level and has played professional sports, whether it's hockey or lacrosse, which is the two primary sports at the school. And being able to go to work and be surrounded by such an amazing group of individuals every single day who are motivating in themselves and motivating you to be better every single day is an environment that I truly enjoy being in. The majority of our staff currently on the lacrosse side of things is playing professional lacrosse, so uh, going to work every day and competing with those guys, not just in the work environment, but knowing that maybe in two weeks you're going to be playing one of them, um, leads for a pretty cool work environment. They say if you love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life, and for me right now, that's exactly what I'm doing. I don't consider consider myself going to work. I think that I'm just lucky enough to wake up every day and get to go enjoy an environment where I get to coach lacrosse, I get to teach kids, I get to be around kids all day, and then on weekends, I'm still available to go play in, whether it's the NLL or MLL. Another question, shout out from to Brad Gillies, a Nighthawks player. We got, what's the secret to your hair? Natural or product? <laughs> um, it's funny that, Brad, you ask that, um, because I think that in a short span over the couple last couple years, I've become known, I guess, for having good hair or hair that's well put together on different occasions. and. Uh, I'll insert a, f I'll insert a photo right here of what my hair looked like last year. It's also the profile picture to my YouTube channel, so you can check it out there. But uh, <laughs> definitely product. If I don't put anything in it, then it kind of looks uh, like a mop on the top of my head. This year I went with a different hairstyle, cut it all off, going with short style this year. But uh -huh. definitely product. Any kind of paste quick shower, throw a little bit in it. I don't waste much time doing my hair. Just kind of throw it in, push it to the back, and, and then it's done for the day, so. Shout out to Brad. Another question from Callum Williams, Snickers or McFlurry? Uh, the Snickers one is respect because you know that I eat Snickers before every single lacrosse game. 
and I have since I was in grade 12 at the Hill Academy. I've had a chocolate bar before every single game. I'm not superstitious by any means, but um, I definitely have a chocolate bar before I go out on the floor. But in terms of Snickers or McFlurry, um, I, I guess I have to go with Snickers because I eat it so frequently. I can never go wrong with an Oreo McFlurry either, so thank you, Callan, for knowing about the Snickers and exposing me. We've got another question from Nate who asks, the difference in mindset and confidence going into Saturday compared to your debut for the Hawks last year. How do you feel playing in Six Nations this summer will contribute to winner ball? Nate, thanks for the question. Um, in terms of the mindset and confidence, I mean, this year it's through the roof compared to last year. Last year, I mean, you're kind of a rookie walking on eggshells. You don't really know what to expect. You don't know what's going on necessarily. And to jump into an environment like that that you've never been in um, is eye-opening, but at the same time exciting. Whereas this year, I mean, I know what to expect. And going into this this year, I mean, I can't really do any worse. I got zero assists and zero goals in my first ever professional lacrosse game. So, and as an offensive player, mind you that, so I don't think I can do much worse. I hope not, but in terms of confidence, I mean, being a year a year out um, helps a ton because you're just you've been through that process. You know what to expect. You know the the routine on a game day. So uh, it's def. I mean, I'm definitely excited this year that I won't have those nerves in terms of being a rookie. They're obviously different nerves, but I'm I'm excited for this year. The Nighthawks are going to do huge things. We're going to do well this year. Chase that cup. Okay, to answer a couple... All right, to answer a couple questions, I kind of get asked on a frequent basis, um, just whether it's a, an interview um, before a game, after a game, or just by fans on a regular basis. Um, to answer those, we'll go through them here, but uh, where did you go to school and what were you looking for in the recruiting process? And... I went to the University of Michigan, obviously played lacrosse there, and what I was looking for in the recruiting process was a school that was as small as possible and as far away from home, which was Sarnia, Ontario, where I grew up, and I didn't want to be anywhere near there just because I wanted to go away. I'd gone to the Hill Academy, which was three hours away, so I kind of wanted to go a little bit further. Mind you, I went on a visit to Michigan, which was only an hour and a half, and immediately knew that that was the place for me, that was where I wanted to spend my four years of collegiate lacrosse and my college life going to that school. So, I mean, I'm tremendously grateful for the opportunity that Michigan gave me and I would never ever regret the decision of going to Michigan. So, go blue. Why not, another question, why number 47? And there's no significant meaning behind the, the number 47 other than I wanted a number in college that was either 5, 25, 15, 35, 45, 55, anything with a 5 because that's what I wore my whole life playing lacrosse. But when I got there, I was given number 47. At the time, with all of our apparel and our gear and everything, all of our numbers were put on to all that stuff. So. I didn't want to flip flop next year and pick a different number and get all new gear and have different numbers on a bunch of a bunch of things. So I stuck with 47 and my main objective was to make sure that when I left the University of Michigan, everybody knew who number 47 was. How did you start lacrosse? Uh, I was three years old. I wasn't able to register for hockey. The only sport I could register for at the time was, was organized lacrosse. Um, a family friend, the McKelveys, had already registered their son a couple years earlier um, and had gone through that process so they informed my parents and my parents signed me up I was three years old started playing and never looked back what was your major at Michigan and I majored in English I flip-flopped around I tried everything I tried Kines, I tried sport management I tried a bunch of other realms but at the end of the day knew that English was my calling I wanted to teach kids when I was older and uh, knew that that was where I wanted to be so I finished with an English degree uh, what is K47 Lacrosse? And K47 Lacrosse, to just put it very simply, is an online platform for virtually giving people lessons. Virtually promoting my own brand in terms of... I had a lot of people who were wanting lessons 
um, from Michigan and at the time living in Toronto to meet them up so to meet them somewhere was virtually impossible and I really couldn't do that so I came up with the idea of creating this platform where I would be able to pro push content to them whether it was a Skype call a, a FaceTime call a phone call an email workouts um, drills to do while also sending them videos so that they could stay in touch with me um, and they could physically see the drills that I was giving to them um, in that manner so K47 lacrosse online platform for virtually pushing content to subscribers in terms of lacrosse lessons. And final question for the day. Uh, did you ever go to film school? And the answer to that is no, I never went to film school. I've been getting asked that a lot lately after putting out this YouTube channel. Um, I never went to film school. I've never done anything with film. Having uploaded these videos and editing them all myself uh, is the first time that I've really ever done anything in this realm. But I wanted to start a YouTube channel a year and a half ago, always found a reason to put it off, and long story short, that year and a half I spent researching and doing all of these different things in order to verse myself in the film world so that I knew how could I tell the best story from beginning to end and fill everything in between while keeping an audience engaged and entertained throughout the entire course of, of the clip. So, I mean, I watch a lot of vlogs, I watch a lot of YouTubers. Um, and I watch a lot of videos, so I kind of have developed a tendency to understand what people like, what they don't like. I read a lot of comments on other vlogs um, so that I can see what people want when they're viewing different aspects of a vlog. And that year and a half was spent doing that on my own, but everything that you see in these vlogs is filmed by me, developed by me, produced by me, um, and all the editing is also done by me. So. I never went to film school, but I take a lot of pride in trying to push out the best content possible for all of you viewers and giving you a great story to, to view along the way. So, but in saying that, that's all for our Q&A. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure that you hit that red, red subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. It means way more than what you think. And I guess that's it. We'll see you in the next vlog. Make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Also, I will attach my Instagram and my Snapchat below so that you guys can ask me questions and I'll answer those through there. Stay tuned. Again, it's Calgary week. It's exciting stuff. We head out Friday to go down to Rochester. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys at 8 a.m. Peace.